Hello guys, welcome to the second part of the full stack application. You can find the full source code of the application in the description below. If you decide to download the source code, you will support my channel too. I won't finish the full application, but I'll show you many examples of the API calls and we will finish the UI part. In the first chapter, we're gonna add functionality for the dark mode and the light mode and we're gonna add our fonts. First of all, I'm gonna create a file. The file must be called underscore document tsx. If you google maintain next.js and you click the first link, the documents provide us a way to use the maintain framework. I'm gonna copy the code and I'm gonna paste it in our file. Now in the head tag, I'm gonna paste our fonts. You can use any link tag from the Google fonts. I'm assuming you know how to grab Google fonts. Now in the app TSX file, we're gonna use the Mantine provider, the color scheme provider and the color scheme. I'm gonna wrap our whole component with the Mantine provider and I'm gonna add some properties. The properties are called with global styles, with normalized CSS, and I'm gonna pass the color scheme in the theme property and the font family too. Now I'm gonna import the use state hook and we're gonna define the color scheme. For the default color scheme we're gonna use the dark mode. Now I'm gonna wrap the whole component with the color scheme provider so we can access the color scheme and I'm gonna pass our variables the color scheme and we need a function to toggle the color scheme. If we will use the function the color scheme will change to light if it's dark or dark if it's light. Now in the next part we're gonna create our page layout. In the page layout we're gonna pass the children and I'm gonna import the component in our TSX file. We're gonna wrap the component which requires stuff. I'm gonna test if everything is working fine. And now we're gonna import some components from the Mantin core. We're gonna need up shell, header, text, Media Query, Burger, and the Use Mantine theme. And of course we need to access the session. We're gonna define our theme. And we're gonna define a state which defines if the mobile navbar is open or not.
we're gonna wrap our children with the upshell which is our main component and i'm gonna pass some styling if the color scheme is dark we're gonna define our background color to the dark seven or if the color scheme is light we're gonna define our background color to gray zero you can find all the default colors in the maintain documents of course there is a way to define new colors too but we're gonna use the default colors now in the header component of our app shell, we need to create the burger menu. I'm gonna add some padding and 70 height. Now let's create a div tag and add display flex align item center and height of 100% and the div tag we're gonna use the media query component and if our viewport is less than 768 pixels we're gonna add the display none property. Now in the burger component we're gonna pass our open variable and on click we're gonna toggle the variable. Next to our burger we're gonna add a text component and I'm gonna type web design tools. Now we need to add the navbar offset breakpoint. This property will hide the navigation bar if our viewport is 768 pixels. Now let's create the nav component and import it to the page layout. I'm gonna pass the component to the navbar property. In the nav component we need to pass the open variable and the hidden breakpoint. Now I'm gonna import some components from the Mantin core and the main component will be the navbar. I'm gonna add some padding and width of 300. The hidden brain point is the hidden brain point which is 786 pixels and the navbar is hidden if the open variable is false. We split the navbar into sections. Our first section will be the brand 
the middle section will be the links and our last section will be our avatar with our info. Now let's start by creating our upper section of our navigation bar, the brand component. In the brand component we're gonna use the Mantine color scheme hook so we can toggle the color scheme. We can accomplish that with a button. First of all let's create a box and we're gonna apply some styling with the sex property. As I mentioned in the previous video the sex property is like in line styling. We're gonna add some padding using the theme object but you can add some padding without using the object. We can easily type 10 pixels or 1 rem. And we're gonna do some border and we're gonna change the color depending on the color scheme. Now let's add the brad component to the navbar section. We're gonna need a group component and we're gonna position the components apart i.e. justify content space between. We're gonna use a theme icon component for our brand logo. We're gonna do gradient variant and in the gradient property we're using some default colors. Now if the radius is large, it means that the container is a circle. In the theme icon, I'm gonna add an SVG. And next to our logo, I'm gonna add a title. Now we need to use a second group component so we can use our action icon. And finally on click we are gonna toggle the color scheme. We are gonna render different icon depending on the color scheme.
Now we are finished with our header component and we are gonna move to the main links. Let's create an interface for our links. We're gonna add an icon, color, a label and the page link. Let's create our component. And we're gonna use the use writer hook so we can access the path name of our URL. We're gonna return a link and we're gonna pass the page link prop. Let's import the link. And the whole link will be an unstyle button. I'm gonna add some SX properties. Both the color and the background color will depend on the theme. Now I'm gonna paste some hover properties and I'm gonna add some icons. In the theme icon component we're gonna render the icon we want. Now we'll paste our links with our properties and we're gonna use the dot map function so we can render all the links. Our final component in the navbar is the user component. If we click the user component, it will redirect us to the settings page. If we are already in the settings page, it will redirect us to the home page. The user component contains our information from the session. The information comes from the Google account. Let's start by creating the user component. We'll use the use maintain theme hook and the use session. And of course the router so we can redirect the user depending on the path. We will return a link and the href property will depend on the path name as I mentioned.
Now in the link component we have a box. I'm gonna apply some padding and the border that will depend on the mode in the color scheme. In the box we're gonna create an unstyled button. Let's style the button first. And we're gonna change the color depending on the color scheme. In the unstyled button we're gonna have a flex div. It will contain the avatar component. And we're gonna pass the source of our image from the session info. If the image will not render properly, we have to display something. I'm gonna display the first letter of our first name and the first letter of our last name. I'm gonna create a function. Now we're gonna use the function in the avatar component and we're gonna pass our name. Next to the avatar we need an icon and some text. In the text we're gonna display our email and our name. Now I will display a different icon depending on the path name. Let's create the settings page so we can test the button.
everything is working properly. The last thing we want to do is if we click on a link we want the navigation bar to close automatically so I'm gonna pass a new property the set open property the set open property is the set state function Now on click we're gonna set open to false. I'm gonna pass the set open function and we're done. Now in order to make TypeScript happy I'm gonna add the set open function to all the main link props. Thank you for watching, in the next part we're gonna extend the Prisma schema and we're gonna do some API calls using the React Query package.